Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Music of the Week. I know, that was a lot quicker than you thought it would be, wouldn't it? So, yeah, um, don't really have a lot to say about the last few days. Thank you to everyone who watched PBW vs. PBW this week. It was an absolute banging show. And, uh, yeah, got about five albums to do for this episode, so let's just get to those. Also, my cat's here. Let's go. So we start with my cat grooming himself. We start with Andrew WK with his sixth album, God Is Partying. Um, so yeah, I've listened to all of his stuff earlier this year for an episode of Backtracking, and it might be no secret that I quite like Andrew WK, and I like this album too. I'm giving it a B plus. I feel like it is a tiny bit indulgent in places. There are some songs that drag slightly, but god damn, I mean. This one, he really takes a good look at himself on this one. There's much darker themes than what I'm used to hearing from him. And he sort of touched on those on You're Not Alone, but that had a more positive undertone. God is Partying does not. It addresses his faith heavily with his relationship with music and his faith in God, I guess you could say. Because I think he identifies as a Christian. He doesn't really swear a lot in songs, so, you know, he, he's a good boy. But yeah, I mean, the dude goes in, he still performs well, he can still sing quite well, and he's still... A very charismatic and personality fueled performer, and this album says that in space. I mean, it's a really good Andrew WK album, like most of his other albums. So yeah, maybe give this one a spin if you if you want something new. Well, something new from Andrew WK, which is the same old Andrew WK, which is never a bad thing. Next up, we go to the always fun to say Copenhagen, specifically in Denmark, as opposed to Copenhagen, um, Washington. And uh, this is for Billy Boy and Poison's third album, titled Umbra. Hang on, didn't I already cover a band with an album named Umbra? Either way, I, th I think I gave the album like a C related grade or something. This one gets a C+. Plus. Fairly generic metalcore from a band who's been around for 15 years, mind you. And I, I will admit some of my opinion was swayed about it because like someone else did do a review on it and they weren't too kind to it. I'm a bit kinder, I think. Um, You know, if I were the same as that review, I'd probably give it around like the low D, high E grade. But as it is, it's just fairly generic metalcore. It's got some good instrumental work at points. Um, you know, it's fine, it's serviceable. It, oh, the, the lyrics are a bit touchy. Though, I mean, they do... You know, I, I don't need a bunch of white guys to explain to me how white supremacy works. I'm I'm fully aware of how it works. But yeah, if you can ignore the lyrics, like, mostly it's a serviceable bit of metalcore from a country who usually does a bit better than this, so... I don't know, I, I was expecting a bit better. The production's alright, structuring's alright, everything is just alright. This album is just alright, so I'm just... I'm, I'm gonna move on. We move on to... Um, G Gift of Gab, with his fourth and sadly final album, Finding Inspiration Somehow. Um, he's a rapper based from Sacramento, California, and he's probably well known. I mean, he, you know, he was 50 years old when he passed away a few uh, months ago, and he was in a lot of really big rap projects over time. And he, yeah, he, he died sadly. But that's not the main reason I'm giving this album an A+, which it does get, by the way. See, he could have spent... The entire time he was, like, at home... But, by the way, just to clarify, his death wasn't related to COVID. It was uh, related to his kidney and liver disease that was getting to him. And, uh, you know, he could have spent this album complaining about his lot in life. But, no, he spent pretty much this entire album a little bit of flexing, but mostly he was trying to just make his world a bit better. Like, he was trying to see the bright side of all of the things he was going through, and... God damn, it's so rich in, like, that jazz-funk style of rap that I really love. Like, so incorporated well with the instrumental beats. Really love the production. Gift of Gap is, has one of the best flows in rap history. I don't care what anyone says. He will never get enough fucking credit for it. God, I loved this album a lot more than I was expecting. So. And the fact that he... They got Latifah True Speaker, his former friend in the Mighty Underdogs. They got him on a guest track. Uh, as, a, as a guest appearance on a track, excuse me. That is fucking incredible, as is this album. I would highly recommend listening to it. It is bittersweet, but it is thankfully mostly on the sweet side because Gab really just spends most of it trying to get people to notice that, hey, you know, I'm in a bad situation, but it's not all terrible. I'm going to try and make things a bit better for myself, and that is exactly what he does. Next up, we go to Dayton, Ohio, for some American post hardcore emo legends, Hawthorne Heights, with their seventh album, The Rangers Follows Me. Yes, their seventh. I'm not including the acoustic version of their debut album as an album in their discography. That ain't what I'm doing. It's my first Hawthorne Heights album in full, first of all, and 
I've wanted to listen to more of their albums for a while. They don't drop a lot of stuff as it goes. They've been around for two decades and they only have seven albums, so their workload isn't exactly the biggest, but I still enjoyed this album. Gets a B plus. I mean, these guys are an institution of American emo for a reason. Also, just noticed how weird my hair looks. There we go. Fixed it now. Mostly. And, yeah, really... <coughs> Fuck it. Really good uh, American emo chops, really solid instrumentation work. They can still perform and write really well. Uh, Mark McMillan, their lead guitarist and screaming singer, is like, he's he does some of the best work on this album. He's really, really good. I really wish his scream had been boosted up a bit more because it sounds a bit too much like background noise. But yeah, it's got like the typical dark lyrics that you would expect from them. It's got Brendan Murphy of Counterparts on track for extra bleakness and extra awesomeness because I love Counterparts. And yeah, just really good uh, use of guest spots as well, especially. Really solidly put together. About what I'd expect from Hawthorne Heights, even though this is my first full album by them. But you know what? Considering it was my first full album by them and it gets a B plus, I mean, I could have done a lot worse. And yeah, I think this was a good place for me to jump on the train, so to speak. Finally, we're ending with another easy favourite for me. Uh, Sincere Engineer with their second album, Bless My Psyche. This is their first album in four years. No doubt, like, I've said this a lot with, album, with bands that have put stuff out like four years ago and not put out a lot between. This was probably supposed to come out last year, but hey ho, pandemic, you prick. But yes, I'm giving this album an A+. I was anticipating this and it did not disappoint. They're from Chicago, Illinois, so more American Midwest emo indie punk, please. And more in this style, like Deanna Baylos, like did most of the instrumentation work and like songwriting herself, so it is very much a one woman project, but everyone like obviously is the backing band and they all sound great. It, it's only half an hour, but it stuffs so much great stuff into itself, you know? It doesn't overindulge, it's very witty in its lyricism and very honest and open. And just fucking incredible. Honestly, if I could... If I could equate... Um, like, say Spanish Love Songs uh, album, Brave Face Everyone, my favourite of 2020, had the same energy, but with the female singer, I think it would be this. Now, I'm not saying this is my favourite album of 2021, although it's quite possibly in the top 10. I, I really enjoyed this. Yeah, you should absolutely go and seek this out for yourself. Amazing lyrics, musicianship, tons of charm and personality. Just really fucking love this one, and I've listened to it like three times and not gotten bored of it yet, so yeah, I'd recommend giving this one a try. If you've heard any buzz about Sincere Engineer, go for it, because they, they're they going to set the wall on fire one day, I hope. So yeah, that'll about do it for another episode of Music of the Week. I will see you all tonight for a gaming stream. It's going to be Spirit of Fire with the Beverly update. Really looking forward to giving that a go. And uh, obviously other stuff besides that. Maybe some Overwatch. I don't know what I'll get up to tonight. Only God knows. And hopefully tomorrow I, I won't do a video, but I'll try and get the parts for PBW vs. AVW uh, this week's episode up by tomorrow. Probably tomorrow night. So... Yeah, look forward to that, and um, then probably a Fire Night review after that, and then some point over the next week, I've gotten the longest John's episode written, so expect that to come within the week at some point. That'll be it. Uh, my cat is still here, and as always, thank you for watching. You're awesome. Bye bye.